wanted to take a moment to talk about linear chord scales and working through a key ornamenting bass notes with melodic pitches and mostly just going up the diatonic. We're going to be in the key of no sharps, no flats here on the fifth string and each phrase is going to begin with a tenth. So it's an octave and a third. Instead of a third. So we're at the fifth string, third fret, and the fifth fret of the second string. So we have this, this is the basis of a regular C chord. And the formula that we're going to use, the mechanism we're going to use, is we're going to come down three scale degrees and raise the bass a step. Now, depending where we are in the scale, these distances are either going to be halves, half step, whole step, two holes, and our ornament might be a half step or whole step, depending. So here's the opening phrase, which will more or less give birth to the rest of them as we go up. So it has a, a descending scale, bass comes up, and we ornament that last melodic pitch. So in this case, fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret, bass comes up to five with the last two fingers. And we do this little ornament, melodic ornament. Now this C chord, we could see this as part of G7, the fifth and fourth fret of the fifth and third strings. If I put the G in the bottom, I think you can hear that that wants to resolve to C. It could also... It could also be a part of... D7. Here's the fifth fret of the fifth and third strings. You need to hear that B note with a G in the bottom. And we get that G7 sound. I suppose all of the examples I'm going to give going up could be extended further with a, a more elaboration in resolution, but we're just looking to get kind of a meditative flow going. I hope you can hear that that's the next inevitable result of coming up a scale degree in the bass. So now we're at D minor with a tenth, fifth, and sixth fret. And I'm coming down two scale degrees. So to uh, 6th, 5th fret, 7th fret of the 3rd string. And at that point, again, the mechanism is the bass note comes up a scale degree. And we're going to ornament this one, not with a diatonic tone, but with a half step below. Which serves to tonicize D minor. That word means that we make something sound like home. So here's C, given its five chord, it sounds very much like C is one. If I come to D minor, now it sounds like D minor is one because I've included the note that makes something tonicized, which is usually the leading tone seven. So for D, C sharp is the note that really affects that change and makes us hear D minor as one. If we use diatonic pitches, there's D and C at the fifth fret of the third string. It's perfectly viable and good. I just chose to use the half step. 
a little half step below because we're not going to stay here. We're going to keep going. So it's a little more edgy. Now, same mechanism is in play, but the fingering is going to be completely different. We're at the third degree with a tenth, but now our diatonic next degree is up here on the third string tenth fret. And our bass is only going to ascend a half step because we're at the third and fourth degrees of the scale. Now I hope if I set you loose here that you'd be able to find the rest of them just using your ear and the basics of this mechanism. I'm going to continue. So now we're at F. It looks just like the one we did for C. The melodic lines coming down uh, two scale steps and then bass is coming up and we're ornamenting with a half step below. And notice the teams of fingers working. So we wouldn't want to necessarily jump up with another set of fingers if we're gonna stay. sound like one. Now here we get G. And I am going to give it the half step below. I like that sound. It would make G sound like one. Because of D7. not understanding some of the theory concepts I'm saying, don't worry about it. I'm saying them for a reason, and that's just, just acclimate your ear to both the sounds that we're in and the terminology to put them together. It's not so important to know the theory, but if you want to improvise in this style, I'd say it is something of a prerequisite to know the implication of these notes. So now we're to A minor. Now it sounds like we're playing A minor and E7 with a B in the bass. But it's just that mechanism again. The same one we had for D minor. Now the one we have for B here it's a little unusual in that it starts off with this tenth with a different fingering, maybe middle two fingers, because we have to get down to that B on the third string 16th fret. So here we're at 14, 15, and I'm coming down 15, 13, 16. And we're coming up to this is 15 and 16 on the 5th and 3rd strings. Sorry if it's hard to see. And now we're going to be back home. Back where we started. See, that really made A minor sound like home base. May G sound like home. Made F sound like home. Made it rather dramatic B7 happen. Made B7 to E minor sound like E minor was home. sound like home. 
sound like home. So what I'm trying to get at is that each of these connected little phrases have a lot of implications for both modulation, for tonicizing a new key, and for just getting your ears and your hands together, making some different kinds of motion, and thinking in larger chunks of material rather than just block chords. Mm -hmm. So I hope this has been of interest. Please let me know if you have questions or comments below, and if you have suggestions for other topics you'd like to see addressed in these lessons. I'm open to hear about your ideas, and I hope you're having a good day there. Thanks for watching.